Welcome with me today as we are looking at water baptism and we know that there are many Christians today who simply choose not to be baptized in water as if it is not a big deal. And likewise, there are many Christians who have been baptized in water, but they have forgotten about the significance that there is in baptism. So it's so easy for people to fall into that place where they become trapped in circumstances and they don't have the ability to overcome and they remain victims within their lives just because they don't have an understanding of the significance of this important part of a Christian's life being baptized. Now as the Great Commission says in Matthew 28 verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So baptism is something that we do not do with infants so that they can become part of the family religion. Baptism is not something that you do as a child or to a child that they would go to heaven. For some Christians it is not a big deal and they see that it is only for someone that is radical and a serious Christian as well. Turn to your neighbor and say exactly. That is what baptism is. Baptism is not for the lukewarm. Baptism is for people who are serious when it comes to fulfilling the righteousness of God in their lives. And baptism is a public act by which we identify ourselves with the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In death, as we go into the water, it symbolizes that we are leaving the old man behind. That we are dying to the old nature, that restricted, limited, weak, imperfect nature. That we die to it, we put it down. And that's now the old, rebellious, unfaithful nature. We die to that in burial. You see, you cannot have a fresh start in Christ until you leave what died in the grave. In the natural, when you attend a funeral, when we leave the grave, we leave behind what is in the grave. We don't take what is in the grave with us home, right? Because that will kill us. We leave the deceased in the grave and we start a new life without the old, a new life in Christ Jesus. You see, when an old man from the grave comes back to life, it's a horror story. We call them zombies and many Christians live like zombies because that's uh, what was supposed to be buried and gone has somehow been resurrected now in their lives again. And we find a zombie atmosphere in marriages, a zombie atmosphere at the workplace where our nation that is 80% Christian according to the statistics, but we see that yet we are the nation with the highest murder rate, the highest child and women trafficking rate and the corruption. And we see that there are a lot of zombies doing the rounds in our nation, in all the spheres and sectors of life. But today and within the next week, as we are going to do the baptism, some of these zombies are going to be put to rest forever. Amen. And we will walk in the victory. So you see, zombies have no life to offer. They cannot contribute to its life and productivity. They steal, kill and destroy. As John 10 verse 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. And many Christians still work with that nature. It's not goodness and mercy that follows them all the days of their lives, but it is offense and lack and misery and brokenness that follows them all the days of their lives. You cannot have a fresh start unless we leave in the grave what needs to be left in the grave. You see, baptism symbolically is where we bury the old man underwater. All the old habits, all the old nature, every part of this rotten, stinking, decaying self is being buried and is being left there. But you see, there's also the last part, which is the resurrection. And the word in Colossians 3 verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. We are raised to life in Christ. When you come out of that water, it's a new creation that rises. A new creation that is empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Uh, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So the same Spirit that rose Jesus, not just 
from the dead to life, but all the way to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And therefore it says that when we are in Christ, we are seated in the heavenly places with Him. No more a victim, but a victor. But it is so important that we come with an attitude of faith. Whether you will be baptized, you know, this Sunday or the next week or two, whether you have been baptized in the past, baptism is not something that happened now and then it's just over. Baptism is a continual laying down, a continual dying to the old and rising up in the new. You see, if we don't come with an attitude of faith, when it comes to baptism, we will not experience what Jesus experienced when he was baptized. When he was baptized, the heavens opened over his life. And in Matthew 3 verse 17, the Father, voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. He was established in his identity as the Son of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, what is faith? Hebrews uh, chapter 11 verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm putting this old thing down. I'm leaving it there, never to be resurrected again. And I'm rising up in a new man in Christ. And you see, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's how we know that when Jesus was baptized, it was a matter of faith for him because God said once again this is my son uh, whom I love with whom I'm well pleased so you see for those who believe all things are possible you can in Christ put the old man down you can live down and you can walk in the newness of Christ in the spirit you see without the element of faith you will go into the water dry as a sinner and you will get out of the water wet as a sinner it is by faith that you are resurrected to a new person. That goes from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from more to more, as we see God actively involved in our lives. You see, in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 4, Paul reminds the Christians, he says, Or oh, have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death, for we died and were buried with Christ. By baptism and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father now we also may live new lives and you might have been baptized decades ago and have forgotten you know that that thing that manifests in your marriage weekly is the one that died you know that that one thing that you speak that language that you speak at work at, at your workplace it, it's actually buried and that zombie needs to be put down. It must be buried again. And he says in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 11, Likewise, you also, listen to this, Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, for so many Christians, Christianity is about not doing what is wrong. You see, but it is not about not doing what is wrong. Christianity is about doing what is right. In the eyes of God. Romans 6 verse 11 says, Reckon yourself to be dead. He says, Reckon. And this is replaced with many words in all the different translations. It means see yourself dead, visualize, envision, recognize, pay attention to this that you are dead in Christ. He says, Count, regard, and esteem. View yourself, envision yourself, see in your mind. Who is this thing you have laid down? Who died? You need to visualize this. Amen. He says, consider, think, analyze, broad over it, meditate on it. Because if you don't familiarize yourself with the one that was put down, you will not become familiar with the one that is resurrected. And the zombie will continue to live in our lives. So as a person who will be baptized in the next week or two, or have been baptized, the following things are very important to remember. We become one with Christ through baptism. The old man died with Christ. Who is the old man in your life? It is the impatient and violent and unfaithful, vulgar, dishonest, selfish, insubordinate, prideful one. That one died with Christ. And now I'm not asking you to identify the dead in your spouse or in other people. 
No, this is not to tell other people, hey, that thing in you is dead, right? No, he says, reckon yourself to be dead. Reckon yourself dead. Count yourself dead. See yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. See, you are now dead to the old man when you become baptized. The old man is no longer alive. It has no more power over your life and it does not determine your future anymore. So don't give him charge in your life. The old man is buried in Christ. A dead person walking is a nightmare, right? So identify those areas in your life that you have put to rest. Identify them as those that will never ever be resurrected in your life again. Your actions, those words, your attitudes, your unbelief. We repent of those things. We confess and we are being cleansed. And that's why Ephesians 4.22 it says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. Like an old dirty jacket, you need to take it off. If you were a person of unforgiveness and bitterness, now you forgive and you release people. Now you are merciful. He says, let him who stole still no longer be angry and do not sin. Take it off. That thing must be put in the ground. Because John 12, 24 says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's our responsibility. Putting away lying. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Verse uh, 29 to 32, it says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and replace it with the resurrected one. According to verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgive one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So the new man is raised in power. Consider the new man in your life. Who is the new man? By the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed. I am redeemed from the power of the devil. By the blood of Jesus, I am justified. I'm sanctified. I'm set apart unto God for godly purposes. You see in the book of Acts, when Peter ministered to the Ethiopian Enoch, and he said to them, they went down the road in Acts 8, 36, and he said to them, you know, they came to the water. He says, yes, water, what hinders me from being baptized? I'm asking you today, what is hindering you from being baptized? And you can have all the excuses in the world, but you, you mean you want to delay your breakthrough? You want to delay putting that thing down and burying it? You see, this is not a game. And this is uh, the, the, the words are that those who believe, this is what the word of God says, those who believe and are baptized, they will be saved. And that's why it's so important that we don't take this for granted. The opportunities that God gives us, but that we need to repent. So coming back to the Great Commission, once again, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Say with me, I am with you. You see, I am with you is not just one half of the command. Many people expect the resurrection power, but they don't want to go through the death. They don't want to become one with Jesus in his death and in his burial so that they can become one with him in his resurrection. The I am with you rests on the fullness of that command. And many of us here are experiencing issues within our lives, areas in your life that you will not be getting the breakthrough. And the question is, have you followed Christ through the baptism of water? Have you become one with him in his death? Because you've got issues and issues and you just can't get the breakthrough. So are you one with Christ in his burial? Where you have put down and laid down those things and buried it in the grave. So that you can be one with him in his resurrection. And see today we're going to, uh, I want to encourage you in this time that we become aware of the presence of the Lord. 
And maybe you're going to be baptized in the next week or two. Maybe God has spoken within your life and, and you say, you know, I want to be baptized. But you know what? You need to deal with your heart when you go through the baptism water because it's not a matter of being religious. It's not just a ceremony. We don't just do it because everybody does it. But there's going to be a move of God in your life as never before. When you do it in faith and realize, I'm laying down this old man. I've reckoned, I've considered this old man. Now I don't want this old man. I want to be united. I want to be one with Christ and in His resurrection. Maybe you have been baptized, but you have forgotten who you are. You have forgotten that you became one with Christ in His death, burial and resurrection. It's time that you repent, that we come before God, that we confess that we have resurrected the zombie. But today we put Him back in the grave and we receive by faith today the Spirit of the living God that we will not just resurrect, you know, to us in this life, but that we will be seated in Christ in the heavenlies and be conquerors. And if you haven't been baptized, then today is the day to activate your faith, to step into that place of obedience and be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to encourage you, let us become aware of the presence of God. And just where you are, raise your hands with me as a sign of surrender. And let us just say, Father, we repent today, first of all, for not taking the baptism serious. Forgive us, Lord, for exalting our pride, for exalting our opinions above what your word says. Forgive us, Lord, where we've been baptized, but we have forgotten that we died in Christ, that the old man was buried in Christ, and that we have been resurrected in the new man in Christ Jesus. We repent of that today, Lord, and we put to rest today. We bury today the old man that is contrary to Christ, that is anti-Christ, that is opposite to Jesus. We put him down today in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, my God, that we are resurrected through the baptism as we come out of the water, new people in Jesus Christ, in the image of God. Behold, all things have become new. And we thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And I want to encourage you today. If the Holy Spirit has spoken to your heart and you know that you need to lie down, you, you've given your heart to the Lord, you've been born again. You know, in other words, when you're born again, what happens to calling yourself a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. But what has happened, and you can modify your behavior, you can try it out of yourself, but you can't change yourself, you can't change your nature. Can't change who you are, but if you invite God into your life, He will come and change and transform your life. He will put in the Holy Spirit. You'll receive the person of the Holy Spirit within your life. The seed of the word is being planted in your life. It permeates, it grows, and you will never be the same uh, again. You know, if you invite God truly to be in your heart, He will change and forgive you and cleanse you. And He will help you and He will help you to overcome within your life. But then we need to acknowledge I'm a sinner and I need God within my life. And when you come to that place, then God can help you. Uh, when you are done with being your own God and you invite the true God into your life, uh, then you can see what God can do. And once you receive Jesus Christ, then within your life, and maybe just today, it's just as simple as saying, Lord, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my pride. I receive you, Lord. Come into my heart. Come and take out this old nature, Lord, and, and put in and fill me with your spirit and everything that I am. I give to you my whole life. I surrender to you. And thank you that you changed me according to the word of God, that now I am a child of God. I belong to you. Amen. And then after this, when this has happened, the next step is to be baptized in water. But once you've been baptized in water and you have come and you've put down the old man and you put down that and you buried it in the watery grave and in faith you raised up as a new person. When you do that, you become a disciple. That is moving from being a Christian to becoming a disciple. Baptism is the first step of becoming a disciple. Now you can't just go on living like you used to. You need to get into your cell group. You need to get a leader that can disciple you in Christ so that you don't go back and become a zombie again, but that you can understand what it means to be close with this new man in Christ and that you can walk effectively 
in this newness of life which Jesus has done in your life. It doesn't happen automatically. You need the Word of God. You need to grow in the Word. You need to attend the service regularly. You need to get into training. You need to have a sponsor or a cell leader that can guide you in everything that you don't know until you understand and grow so much that you can do this for somebody else again and guide them through the process of being discipled. And if you've been obedient today, God bless you. And I pray that you will grow from strength to strength and that you will see the power of God in your love as you walk in this newness, hallelujah, that God has given us. God bless you.